Hello friends, welcome to Astro Cassette. My name is Pavan Bhardwaj. Today I'm going to unbox SV Boni 60mm guide scope. Join me in this project today. If you are new to the channel, you are welcome. If you have not subscribed so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. I got this uh, guide scope primarily for my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope. This guide scope will serve two purposes. Number one, it will act as a guide scope uh, during astrophotography. And number two, uh, when I'm using the telescope for visual observations, this guide scope will act as a wide field finder scope. First, I'll unbox and assemble. Later, I'll demonstrate how this guide scope can be easily converted into a finder scope. Uh, the assembly part is done. Let's take a look at some of the features uh, of this 60mm uh, guide scope. After that, uh, we'll go over some other uses of this guide scope, such as a small refractor, refractor telescope, and as a finder scope. This SV Boni 60mm guide scope is actually an acromat refractor. Uh, for guiding purposes, you don't need uh, any apochromatic or you know uh, ED glass, a simple acromat will do the purpose. The focal length of this, oops, <laughs> the focal length of this uh, guide scope is 240 millimeter, uh, which is good for any telescopes uh, with a thousand millimeter or more focal length, like your. Uh, six inches or eight inches 11 inches uh, schmidt cassegrain or any newtonians or any edge hd telescopes the focal ratio is f4 which is nice the total weight of uh, this guide scope is uh, as advertised by swasmi boni is 790 grams 
but if we add a small guide camera like this uh, GWO 120mm mini that may add another 100 grams so the total weight on the rig would be about 900 grams or you can say little less than uh, two pounds acceptable so the guide scope comes with dust cap for the objective lens and another dust cap for the eyepiece holder uh, this part of the scope is actually a dew shield so I just checked it about 50 millimeter the dust cap part of this scope is about 50 millimeters so the objective lens is somewhere over here so this 50 mm is the length of the dew shield this part is threaded so if you want to extend the dew shield you can do it by adding more extensions it comes with two tube rings with six thumb screws and each thumb screw has a nylon tip that means uh, if you move the tube within the rings the screws will not scratch the tube there will be no marks on it these screws are used to align the scope balance the scope by moving it forward or backward there's a small dovetail which is somewhat universal it is 1.8 inches or about 30 millimeter wide and let me check Eighty nine millimeter long or three and a half inches long. So it can easily go into any universal mounting bracket like this. I got this for about twelve dollars or fifteen dollars from Amazon. I don't remember. But uh, this universal dovetail goes into this universal mount and you can tighten it from here. And if you need to balance it, you can move it forward or backward like this. And tighten it wherever you want. Uh, one more feature of this uh, dovetail mounting bar is that it comes with five threaded screws. One, two, three, four, five. So if you want to attach more mounting brackets, it would be a little easy. Next, talk about the focus things as you can see uh, this is a helical focuser and behind that we have a draw tube so for rough focus we can just loosen this screw and move the draw to tube until we get rough focus let's say we get it here and then loosen this screw tighten this Loosen this screw and move this helical focuser to get fine focus. Where I will get the draw tube is 35 millimeters, and the helical focuser can uh, can extend the camera for another 10 millimeters or so. So the total length we get here for focusing is 45 millimeters. To attach a guide camera, you simply loosen this screw. This socket here has brass compression rings. That means when you attach your camera, insert your camera like this, or any other guide camera with 1.25 inches nose piece, and you tighten it, there will be no scratches on the camera body and also guide cameras like uh, 120 mm mini or 174 mm mini uh, you get additional focus by moving the body of the camera in or out like this so there are actually three options to focus the guide camera from the draw tube from the helical focuser or from the guide camera itself 
that means you do not need any extension tubes to get the camera in focus one more feature of the helical focuser is that when you move this focuser the camera stays in place the orientation of the camera like you can see here the orientation of the camera does not move there is no change in direction of the camera so your stars and everything or whatever object you are looking at or uh, imaging that will stay in place so because we are adjusting the focus of the guide scope from either the draw tube or the helical focuser or by moving the camera in or out that means the the entire focus function is on one side of the guide scope uh, i have another guide scope uh, 50 mm guide scope with my william optics uh, uh, gt71 which has a focus point focus on the front side you can adjust the uh, dew shield and then you have to adjust the camera so in case of this as we bone the entire focus is done on one side so because this scope is advertised as a multi use guide scope the first use is as a guide scope as we have seen secondly we can also use this guide scope as a finder scope so when i'm not using my edge hd 8 inch telescope for imaging i can use this as a finder scope so it's very easy to do that I'll move that away i'll just take out this camera from here and insert let's say for example a 20 mm ipc and again i can adjust the focus from here or from here or by moving it a little bit in or out and if i want i can add because using this as a finder scope uh, all images that it captures or whatever i see in the finder scope would be inverted upside down to avoid that i can add star diagonal so if i add a star diagonal like this and insert my 20 mm ipc i can use this as a finder scope and align the finder scope with uh, the main scope using these thumb screws six thumb screws so let's remove all of this now one more interesting use of this guide scope is a small beginner type uh, telescope you can attach any planetary camera into this 1.25 inch nose piece and take images of the moon or you know, star clusters or whatever you wish this would be a 60 mm telescope and if you want there's an option to attach a dslr camera like this also the screws keep jumping here and there so this ipc holder actually has uh, m42 threads to use this guide scope as a telescope small telescope all you need to do is attach a planetary camera like your zwo 224 or 462 or the newer ones like zwo asi 585 you can simply uh, use the nose piece to go in here and tighten that with this if you want you can easily add a barlow at the parlo and then attach the camera to use a dslr what you will need is this tearing canon tearing let's see how it is done so attach the tearing to the camera here the click it is tightened and then simply There you go. This is a small 60 mm lens for the DSLR camera. To mount this on a tripod, you have two options. You can use this dovetail, and if it doesn't balance, you can just 
remove the rings along with the dovetail. Keep it away and mount on the tripod using this screw here. Standard DSLR mounts. How about the performance of this guide scope? Honestly, I have not checked the performance myself. Weather has been crazy out here in Toronto area. I do that as soon as it is possible to go out. Right now, the entire backyard is full of snow. The actual performance of any guide scope, whether it is 50 millimeter, 60 millimeter, or 30 millimeter, you say so, that depends on many factors. The scope itself, its focal length aperture, uh, and focal ratio, pixel size of the guide camera, and the guiding software like PHD or Nina, and of course, the mount settings, and uh, not to forget the weather conditions. If it is calm or windy, that also affects the guiding performance. So this was my brief review of uh, SV Boney 60mm guide scope, my initial impressions of the guide scope. For the price that I got this camera, about 110 uh, Canadian dollars, which is less than 100 US dollars, it seems to be a low cost solution for guiding or any telescope which is a thousand millimeter or more in focal length. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.